Welcome to session two in this series of KDP Start to Finish. In session one, we discovered that large print word searches are super popular, especially with a clear theme. So I'll follow that research and do a large print word search with the theme of small book, small words with big text word search. I'm sorry, what was that? I know it's a bit quirky, but it should be fun and an evergreen choice. If you're considering themes, holiday topics are always a hit too. Today, I'll walk you through the whole process from creating the word search content to formatting each page. Can you do that for me? Here's the thing, no matter how great your idea is, if your formatting is messy or hard to read, you're going to lose potential readers. We want our book to look professional, clean, and easy to navigate, especially for large print word searches. So let's get started on making sure everything's set up perfectly. Okay, first of all, sorry about the glare on my glasses. It is what it is. Um, this is the word search we're going to end up with, the word search book, but I'm going to walk you through uh, everything from the very beginning. So this is how you format the word search. You can do this in Excel or I did it in Google Sheets. Now, here's the thing. Here are some things to remember. Uh, average or good amount of words for each word search or when you're doing large print is about 15 words. This is how you format it. Look closely. So here... The first line of that particular puzzle is puzzle number one, and then in parentheses, the name of that particular puzzle. Or you can swap that. I could have called this mini instruments, and then in parentheses, put puzzle number one. So that doesn't really matter. Just know that that first line is the title. Then you have your 15 words. They have to be, um, they cannot be only two letters, like of, at, they need to be a minimum of three letters, okay? And so then numbers two through 16, so those are my 15 words. Then put a space and then do the exact same thing again, okay? So that is the pattern you are going to have in order to format your word search. And you can do it like this. with You could do a thousand word searches all in this format. Let me show you how I use ChatGPT to help create all of the word searches. I'm gonna show you what worked and what didn't work. When I start using ChatGPT for any of my work, I consider it like molding, um, molding clay. You slowly have to work with it and um, until you can get the output that you want. So I asked first, I said here, I'm going to make a word search for, for adults, all about small things, Give me a main list of categories that could be considered small things. And then I asked you for those 15 words, examples. So here's my list, 15 topics. And I liked the topics. So then I said, go ahead and give me 15 words that match each of those topics. Now, um, at first, it did it as a CSV file. It did not format it well. So I asked if they put it right there, something I could copy and paste. And you'll see it put all of the words horizontally, but I need them vertically. So that's what I asked in one column. And then, awesome, it did it. But I am still I was still working as if I'm molding that clay. I wanted to continue to work and um, create it. I wanted it to give me puzzle number one and in parentheses, the name of that puzzle. Um, so I was trying to work with it and do that. And it really wasn't. So I just went ahead and... What I had it do at first was just give me the 15 words and I was copying and pasting them over into the CSV file in my Google Sheets, okay? So then, so I kept on doing that. Then I had to make sure I added do not repeat words because it was repeating some words. You just have to tell it these things. Oh, here, this is the one that I found out you, you have to have a minimum of three letters because here I had if, or, and it gave me an error code when I tried to upload it to BookBolt mini travel essentials. And I said, okay, it's working. I need 10 more categories. And it gave me 10 more. And this whole time I'm copying and pasting and formatting it in um, my Google Sheets. Okay. Now here, I started to wonder, well, can it just format it into a CSV file for me? I found that it wasn't quite getting the um, process that I wanted. It was not getting uh, the format that I wanted. So I tried, as you can see, I tried communicating with the chat GPT. 
to create more, create more. And I finally realized that the uh, it was the fastest way for me to use ChatGPT or the most efficient way was for me to ask it to create those 15 words, uh, list them vertically, and then I just copied and pasted it into the CSV file. And so here I was able to get 66, just I landed on 66, uh, word searches. Now I'm going to go ahead and download it. And you have to download it as a CSV file, the comma separated values. Now let's jump over to BookBolt and I'll show you how to format the book. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. Project, new project. Now I'm going to call this large print word search. I want it six by nine. I want, even though the words are going to be large or the print is going to be large, I wanted it on a six by nine book, the idea that it could be put in someone's bag or purse, taken with them, kind of like a little travel book. So I still kept it small, black and white paper. Now let's talk, and I did no bleed. Let's talk about how many pages. So I had to write this down. 66 word searches. I don't want a word search on the back of one because I want them to be able to, I don't want the words or the circles to bleed through. So 66 word searches with nothing on the back means 132 pages. But then I wanted the answers to be towards the end of the book and those can be back to back. Now you can do like four, four answers, answer keys on one page, but they end up being so small. It's not really worth it, especially if you're doing a large print. I'm assuming if you're someone like me with glasses. So um, that small, really, really tiny answer key in the back, not good. So that ends up being 198 pages. And then I added a few because I do want like an intro page at the beginning and possibly one extra page at the end. So I'm going to make this 202 pages and create project. Now we are going to build each page from the bottom up like an open face sandwich. Okay, so the word search is actually going to be the last thing we put on top. Do you remember when we did the research in session one and we identified that people really liked, we read the comments um, that people left on those word searches. They really liked the designs on the page. So it's not just a word search. So let's go ahead and make those. Now for this one, I'm going to use Canva. The one thing that really worries me is the uh, is the licensing agreement, but I do feel like I'm changing or adjusting enough of these elements that I'm not going to be in violation. What I did was on the back, I just said swirls here in the elements. Let me do this here. I did swirls background and I found this one. I liked it. You'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to build on it. For my second one, I did this star background. Let's go ahead and add one for the third. Now remember, this is gonna be printing black and white, so it really doesn't matter what colors I have. Just wanna do some fun designs. Oh, that's a fun one. And I'm gonna do four, you could do five, you could do 10, but what I'm gonna do is then just have it repeat. So why don't we go ahead and do five, and then um, that back one, background will repeat. Let's go back to the first page. Now, I want my word search to be on the white part in the center. So what I did was I typed in white rectangle, and I ended up sele selecting this one because if you'll notice behind this white rectangle, there's a shadow, so it almost lifts it from the page, and it just adds a little bit more dimension. Remember, this is just one example and then from practice, because I went in and practiced this, I noticed that the white needs to be a little bit more expanded. I'm going to put it in the center there. Do you see how that's a dotted line in the center? That means that my top page is centered with my bottom graphic. But if I move it up a little bit, you'll see how it has, I just, I just lost it. That's now a solid line. That means that it's lined up or centered with the entire page. So I have this. I'm going to go ahead and copy it and paste it on the rest. And you can really see on this one, that one's even clearer. You can see that shadow underneath it for a little bit of dimension. Now I'm going to go ahead and title these word search backgrounds. 
and download them as PDFs. Now here in BookBolt, let's go ahead and upload that PDF that was just created. Upload PDF. Now remember, when you upload a PDF, I previously thought you had to create a separate folder. It actually will create a folder for you. Watch. Okay, I want all five pages, no margins, submit. Because it's recognizing that it's a whole, bit of, whole bunch of different pages, it's actually creating a folder for me. Okay, and you'll see here, there's my five pages. I'm going to go back one step, and look, there it is, word search backgrounds. It already created a folder for me. Now, I'm going to right-click and use folder as page template. Now I can tell BookBolt where I want those pages. So let me show you the easiest way for me I found to do this. I want it on just about the first, remember like the first 130 pages. So I'm going to select the odd first half. Okay. And I'm going to deselect that first page. Because remember, that first page is the first one right when you open it up. And that is going to be like my, basically like a title page, right? Is gonna, this book belongs to. Page two is the back of that. So page three is the very first one on the right-hand side. And I don't want anything on page four because that's the back of page three. And so on. Now, I need to ensure that this covers, how many pages do I have? 132 pages. Because remember, that's 66 word searches, so double that. Okay, now here it doesn't. So I'm just going to add up to 132. I'm going to add one more just in case. What will happen is if I, if I add too many pages, it'll just start to repeat. The It'll go back to the beginning and start to repeat, and that's fine with me. Okay, I've selected those. Now I'm going to continue to my options. I want this to expand to the paper edges because remember, this is my background. I do want it to resize to fill the whole paper. Okay. And submit. Let's go to the eyeball book view. Hey, I think I did it right. Hey, this is why I had to, I had to practice first. It's okay, it takes these steps. Let's see what it looks like in book view. So that's the cover, first page, that title page. Hmm. You'll notice how, see how right here, this white goes a bit beyond. That's because that's in the, um, that's in that gutter of the open book. As long as the word search is in the center, I don't see a problem with that. I actually do think it's too, let's see what the next one looks like. Yeah. No, I think I need to redo it. Let's redo it. It'll be worth it. Okay, so I'm going to come back to here, come back to my Canva. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, bring it up, and brought it in just a little bit. I know it's not good. I know, I hate guessing, but honestly, sometimes that's just what we're doing. So I'm going to replace the others. And let's try this again. I'm going to clear all pages. I want to delete this one just so it doesn't get confusing. As you can see, organization is an issue I have. Let's try it again. Okay, back one step. Right click, use folder as page template. Here we go again. Select odd, first half, uncheck the first one, and select up to 132. Oh, we did it. It was so much better. I know it goes past the green line just a little bit, but that center part in the gutter, it's okay that there's more room in there because that's where the uh, page, you know, bends in. So you're not going to see that part. I'm looking at the green lines. I have the right amount of white spacing. Yay. Let's move on. Pause right here. This is a mistake I've made all the time and I've done it already in this tutorial. 
Okay, we are going to be putting one template on top of another. So the background that we created is the bottom template. And we need to make sure we tell BookBolt, don't replace the previous template. And it's this one little box right down here, one template per page. I'm going to uncheck that box and now we're good or else you end up, I just redid things five times because I'm like, why does it keep replacing the, the previous template? Now let's go ahead and enter our word search. Come over here to the page templates. I'm going to select word search standard. Now remember, I want to identify every page it's going to be on and that's every other page. So it's going to do the same thing I just did with the first template. I'm going to select the odd first half and select the first one up to page 133. Continue to my options. I want it to have 15 words per puzzle. I'm going to keep up here Amazon KDP guidelines because I want it to be in the center, not extend to the paper edges. Right here is where you're going to select the larger letter size for our large print word searches. I'm gonna choose uh, big, 80% of the cell it will fill. I'm gonna keep everything else pretty standard. Copy appearance from the puzzle page to the solution, solution page. Now, let's look at that title. I want that first line to be the title. I'm gonna leave everything else the same. And now I'm going to upload my CSV file. Don't forget to uncheck this one box down here, one template per page. So now it will overlap and it will have both of those templates. Let's select the solutions. Now I want it to be on page 135 because I want this back of 133 to be blank. So I'm going to use from 135 to 200. And I get a couple pages at the end. Now it would tell me right here if I had any errors to fix. I think it looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and look at our cover. Now the next session is going to be all about covers. What type of covers are good for different types of books, uh, what's trending, what sells, and how to make them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that I chose one cover for this one, and but I'm not gonna go into too many of the details about it. So here on the front page, And I think that's pretty good. You can do more down that left-hand side if you'd like. Here on our first title page, I'm actually going to put this one. And I'm going to add text box. Put that down there. Now I'm going to download the entire project. And that's the first part of the formatting. Now in the next video, I will show you the uploading into KDP, all of those details like the description and the keywording and the categories. We'll do that and combine it with the uh, description of how to do great covers. And uh, because that's also another beast in itself. So thank you so much for joining me today. And that's it. You've now got a formatted, theme-driven word search book ready to upload. And once you get the hang of this, you can rinse and repeat exploring new themes like holidays or even quirky ideas like my small words theme. All right, class, time for your assignment. Here's what I want. I want you to identify a theme for your word search and practice the process of formatting it for BookBolt. Try uploading to work out the kinks. Formatting is such an important step, and by taking action on this assignment, you're one step closer to publishing. In our next class, we'll go into details on designing an eye-catching cover, so be sure to subscribe and leave your assignment below. I can't wait to see what you come up with.